brothers and sisters, we have been studying the book of Acts and I've been doing Bible study in the book of Acts. So today we want to summarize and do what the Acts says we should do. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to God. Because as we have learned and have studied, we have come to understand that the Acts have not ceased, have not stopped. The acts of God and of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ continues with us. Glory be to God. We studied the Synoptic Gospels. And I want to tell you emphatically that in the Synoptic Gospels, the disciples underwent training phase or they went through a training. While in the Acts, they went through the practice and growing phase. Let me say that again. So the entire Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. All that you see there, as far as the disciples are concerned or were concerned, they were undergoing a training phase. And this should really teach us a lot about this life and this mission that we have been given to be partakers of the divine nature and the divine will of God. So Jesus Christ spent time teaching, demonstrating, and also sending the disciples that were with him on practical exercise. For example, you know in the book of Luke chapter 10, Jesus Christ sent the disciples, in fact, 70, not just the 12. He sent the 70 out. I can read verse 1. He said, after visiting, the Lord appointed 70 others also. 70 others. So that means the 12 were not included. Others also. And send them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Then he said to them, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. If you jump. He told them to go in verse 9. He said, and heal the sick there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. And they went out. Of course, you remember they returned with testimony in verse 17. Luke chapter 10, verse 17. Then the 70 returned with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. So this was... A practical session. The uh, disciples went. Uh, you, the, the 12 had also been sent out and they had the same testimony, the same experience. And Jesus Christ told them, when I go, the Holy Spirit will be sent to you. The Father will send the Holy Spirit to you in my name. And when he comes, then you will take over this work and you will do this work, greater works than I have done. Let's look at Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. If we start from verse 46, he said, Then he said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached to his should be preached in his name. Preached in whose name? In his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. 48. And you are witnesses of these things. 49. Behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. But tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Until you are endued with power from on high. And so if you go to the book of Acts, then you see the continuation of that in Acts chapter 1. Verses 5 through to 8. And I'll just read verse 5 and then uh, verse 8. It says, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. 
for you, uh, uh, verse 8, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. So the synoptic gospel set out, records, demonstrates the training faith that the disciples underwent. While the book of Acts records, demonstrates the practice and growing faith. So it's like if you have a task to be done or you employed a new staff and you put that staff through training. And of course, trainings usually will follow up with some um, practice, you know, practicals. And that staff finishes that practical, finishes that training, and then comes to apply it in the job. As long as the staff continues to work in that company, the staff will be using that training and growing. He, the staff will be able to add, understand even better as he or she continues to practice. And that's why I make bold to tell you clearly that the book of Acts shows us the practice and growing faith that the disciples, the apostles, and early believers went through. And all these have been recorded for us. So the book of Acts is called the Acts of the Apostles. However, brothers and sisters, the real emphasis is the Acts of God and Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit in the lives of the apostles and early believers in Christ. The Acts of the Apostles emphasizes the Acts of God and Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit in the lives of the apostles and early believers in Christ. So the overall summary of the book of Acts is this, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The entire summary of the book of Acts is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. No Holy Spirit, no acts of God. So if you want to experience the acts of God in your life, you have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And so I emphasize that point again, that the entire summary of the book of Acts is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. No Holy Spirit, no acts of God. If you want to experience the acts of God in your life, then receive the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. And you can see that in the book of Acts that we just read, Acts chapter 1, verse 8. There Jesus Christ spoke before he left and ascended to heaven to the apostles. He said, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. The Acts of the Apostles, the summary of it is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And so uh, Jesus Christ completed his ministry and ascended to heaven, the ministry here on earth. And of course, he continues to minister in heaven to us to bring about the fulfillment of the will of God. But the Holy Spirit has been sent to us to continue with us in the ministry, ministering of the will of God here on earth through us. So we are in the dispensation of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And that's what the book of Acts demonstrates. So let's look at a couple of uh, scriptures very quickly, and then we'll come to pray. So Jesus Christ said that in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, that we read, and the fulfillment immediately happened in Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, from verse 1 to 4. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. 
Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Glory be to God. Acts chapter 4, verse 31. We're just going to go through the scriptures quickly. Acts chapter 4, verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And these are the same people who, of course, there were more in number here, who were already filled with the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2. And so we continually get filled with the Holy Spirit. If you move quickly with me to Acts chapter 6, it all over. It's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 6, verse 5, and then verse 8. It said, And the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith, and the Holy Spirit, and Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte from Antioch. So you know the story. The believers that were chosen, the deacons, to serve. So that the apostles can concentrate on the ministry of the word and prayer, which you can see in verse 4. It says, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. But you choose among you seven men full of the Holy Spirit and, of, and, and, and wisdom and who are of good report. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith, full of faith and the Holy Spirit. A brother was asking last Sunday and said, how do we translate this thing into personal um, uh, reality? Oh, brother, it is as simple as it is. Faith and the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit and faith walking in love, which is what we have covered before. But we'll come back to touch on that. If we jump to verse 8, look at verse 8 of Acts chapter 6. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. Why? Because he was filled with the Holy Spirit or full of the Holy Spirit and faith. That's the key. Walk by faith and love. Walk by faith and love. Let's quickly go to Acts chapter 8. Ch Acts chapter 8. There are a whole lot. Let's look at verse 14 to 17. Acts 8, 14 to 17. Now, when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that, this, that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them, who when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet he had fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Do you see that? 17. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given. He offered them money, saying, Give me this power also, that anyone on whom I lay hands may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, Your money perish with you, because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. The Holy Spirit cannot be purchased with any money. It cannot be because of your giving. When they say, uh, give, sow seed, and you will receive the Holy Spirit. It cannot be. But of course, I have taught us, you have to give to support the work of God. And you have to give to the poor. You must be a chronic giver. According to the word of God. Give and it shall be given to you. That is 
the principle of God. And Paul has taught us a lot, both in Acts here and in uh, Corinthians, about giving to support the ministry. So give, but don't be cajoled to give that by giving, you will receive the Holy Spirit. You've seen it here. So how did they receive the Holy Spirit here? Even though they were baptized into Christ, they, they did not seek because they didn't understand, they didn't know. They were not asking for it. They were not seeking for it until Peter and the other apostles came. When they came, they made them to know that for you to be a Christian, go from just being a disciple that is following the letter, the rules and regulations to living the fullness of God, manifesting the life of God, enjoying the abundant life, experiencing the acts of God and of his son Jesus Christ in your life by the power of the Holy Spirit. You have to receive the Holy Spirit because it's only possible by the Holy Spirit. So Jesus told the disciples, you have to tarry till the Holy Spirit comes. And when the Holy Spirit comes, you will receive power to be a witness. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And everywhere the apostles went, they made sure those who have believed and received Jesus Christ and have given their life to God and repented from their sins were ministered to, to receive the Holy Spirit, taught to receive the Holy Spirit and ministered to. And God is faithful. Oh, God is faithful. I say God is faithful. In Luke chapter 11, verses 13 and 14, there the Bible tells us that if we ask the Father, you give us the Holy Spirit, he will give it to us. Glory be to God. And you see here in the book of Acts, demonstrated all through. Whenever the disciples of Jesus Christ, who have become members of the way that is Christians, who have received the Holy Spirit, pray to God, asking for the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. They receive the Holy Spirit and they minister the Holy Spirit to others as well, not by money, not by selfish gains. Jesus said, freely you have received, freely give. It is the free gift of God. Glory be to God. Let's move. So if we go to Acts chapter 19, Acts chapter 19, we'll come back, but let's look at the example of Paul. So this was Peter. I told us that Everything, almost everything that happened, the Holy Spirit performed in the life of Peter also happened in the life of Paul. Paul was not there when Jesus walked the face of the earth as a disciple of Jesus, but he was called in. Acts chapter 19. So this demonstrates to you that this gift, this blessing, this power is available to you and I today, who are also members of the way, the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ, who have come to him, to Christ, who are Christians. Acts chapter 19, let's start reading from verse 1 to 7. And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth, that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus. And finding some disciples, he said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Some people want to shy away from this because they have not given themselves fully. They have not yielded to Christ. They know the Holy Spirit cannot be faked. If you're not of Christ, the Holy Spirit will not be given when you pray. But if you are of Christ, when you pray, the Holy Spirit will come. Hallelujah. And so talk is cheap. The book of 1 uh, Corinthians that we read, chapter 4, verse 20, it says the kingdom of God is not in talk, is not in word. It is in demonstration of the power of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4 says, Paul says, 
that I did not come to you with the persuasive words of man's wisdom. I did not come to you with human philosophy and theory. I did not come to you with religious argument. He said, I came to you with the demonstration of the spirit of God and the power of God. If Jesus is with us, he will confirm his word. Because it is his duty to call many into the kingdom, the kingdom of God, the very kingdom for which he came down and laid down his life for all humankind, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. According to John chapter 3, verse 16, the love of God is so great, so awesome. So mighty, so wonderful. Let's continue to read in Acts chapter 19. So he said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they said to him, we have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said to them, into what then were you baptized? So they said, into John's baptism. For then Paul said, John indeed baptized with a baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. Who are we to preach? Believe on Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Verse 5. When they heard these, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. 6. And when Paul had laid hands on them, just like Peter laid hands on them, Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Oh, some of you say the tongue speaking has passed. It has not passed. It is the same Holy Spirit. It will enable you today to speak in tongues. Just release yourself by faith. Resist not him, the Holy Spirit. I have seen him happen and happen and happen many times. While I minister the word, while I pray for people, while I lay hands, the Holy Spirit feels the person I prayed for, the people I pray for. Sometimes while just teaching the word of God, the Holy Spirit falls on people, just like it happened. In Acts chapter 10, let's go there, Acts chapter 10. Let's go back and look at that, Acts chapter 10. So that you know, it is not only when you lay hands. In Acts chapter 10, from verse 44 to 48, you know, this is about the household of Cornelius, a centurion in the Italian regiment. He was not a Jew. I'll read from verse 44. He said, while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. And those of the circumcision who believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because the gifts of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnifying God. Then Peter answered, can anyone forbid water that this should not be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then they asked him to stay a few days. So the Holy Spirit fell on the household of Cornelius. They were not baptized in water yet. So that tells us it is in believing, it is in repentance, it is in giving our hearts that the, and then praying for the Holy Spirit to come upon us that we receive the Holy Spirit. And it is this Holy Spirit of God, this power of God that enables us to be witnesses to Jesus and for him to manifest the power and the miracles of God. Number one miracle of God is to bring sinners to repentance and into the kingdom of God before every other 
miracle. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And you see, Peter emphasizes in Acts, Acts chapter 2, verses 38 and 39. Oh, glory be to God. As you know, after the Holy Spirit came upon them and they began to speak in tongues, manifesting the power and the gift of the Holy Spirit, and people were wondering. And so Peter, here in Acts chapter 2, verses 38 and 39, spoke to the people. Um, but let me start from Verse 37, now when they heard this, they were caught to the, to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Are you here asking, what shall I do? Listen to 38 and 39. Then Peter said to them, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Did you see the, the formula there? For the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off. As many as the Lord our God will call. And so when you repent, you give your life to Jesus. You believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. And that through him, your sins are forgiven. You forsake your sin. Abandon it forever. And come into Jesus Christ. And believe in him. God will forgive you. And then you will ask. And God will give you the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. It is this spirit of God. It is this power of God that manifests mightily in us, works in us, the will of God. Glory be to God. I just take uh, two more examples to show that it is not limited to Peter and Paul. In Acts chapter 9, 17 and 18, Ananias was the one who ministered the Holy Spirit to, to Saul. Acts chapter 19, 17 and 18, look at it. He said, An Ananias, went his way and entered the house and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you came has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales and he received his sight at once and he arose and was baptized. And of course, you know the story of Philip who was even transported by the Holy Spirit. Glory be to God. The Holy Spirit enables the disciples, the apostles, the believers to do a number of things. Acts 13. Acts 13. Let's just look at verse 2 and then we'll move on. Acts 13 verse 3 says, As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, the Holy Spirit spoke. So the Holy Spirit cannot be a force. Those of you that were taught that the Holy Spirit is a force. Holy Spirit is not a force. He is a person. He speaks. He sees. He knows. He teaches. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 13, verse 2. As they ministered to the to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I, did you see that? I have called them because he is, it is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. It is the dispensation, dispensation of the Holy Spirit. He's the one who ministers and leads us to do the will of God. Through the name of Jesus. We will come to the name of Jesus another time. Glory be to God. Look at verse 4. So being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. I'm going to jump. Verse 6. Now when they had gone through the island of Pavos, 
they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was by Jesus, who was with the proconsul, Sergius, Paulus, an intelligent man. This man called for Barnabas and saw and sought to hear the word of God. But Elimas, the sorcerer, for so his name is translated, which stood them, seeking to turn the proconsul away from the faith. Nine, then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at him. Did you see that? It is always the Holy Spirit at work, brothers and sisters. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, no acts of God and of Jesus Christ. No Holy Spirit, no acts of God. You want the acts of God? You get drowned, get soaked, get empowered by the Holy Spirit. Then Saul, I'm reading verse 9 again. Then Saul, who is called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at him and said, Oh, fool of all deceit and all fraud, you son of the devil. You, are en you, you enemy of all righteousness. Will you not cease perverting the straight ways of the Lord? Level. And now indeed, the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you shall be blind, not seeing the sun for a time. And immediately, a dark mist fell on him, and he went around seeking someone to lead him by hand. Twelve. Then the proconsul believed when he saw that he had been done, when he saw what had been done, being astonished at the teaching of the Lord. Beloved brothers and sisters, it is time. There are many more references, but I think it's time. It is time. It is the right time for you to experience the power of the Holy Spirit. So, have you connected here and you have not yet given your life to Jesus? As we read there, Peter said, repent and let every one of you be baptized. In the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. As I told us, the requirement is repentance. As you saw in Acts chapter 10, verses 44 and 45 in the household of Cornelius. Are you ready to repent now? Because we're going in straight to minister and praying that this power of the Holy Spirit might move in your life, move in my life, move in us. You shall not be the same again. When the apostles, the disciples, received the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2, they began to witness. And Jesus confirmed every word, confirmed the, the prayer that they pray by the power of God, by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so if you're connected here, and you know your life is not right with God, as you have heard in Acts chapter 2, verse 37, he said, now when they heard this, they were caught to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? What you shall do is to repent now. Make up your mind and tell him, say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying for me. I believe with my heart, I believe that you died for me and you rose from the dead and through you, God has given forgiveness of sin to all humankind, all who believe. And so right now I ask Almighty God, please forgive me all my sins. I repent of them all and I forsake them now and forever. Heavenly Father, break the yoke of sin from my life. Lord Jesus, it is written. If the Son therefore sets you free, you shall be free indeed. So I thank you for setting me free from sin, from the world, from the power of Satan. And I confess that you are my Lord and that I am free indeed. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for saving my life, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for setting me free. I am free indeed. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Glory be to God. If you have prayed that prayer, brothers and sisters, now let's ask for the Holy Spirit. As it happens in Acts chapter 10, 
verse 44, while Peter was yet speaking, because we are connecting online, I don't have the opportunity of laying hands on you, but the Spirit of God is right where you are. Jesus is with you. He is everywhere. He is seated, oh, at the right hand of God, the right hand of the Father, with all power, all authority, all dominion. He has preeminence over all creations of God in heaven and on earth and beneath the earth. And in his name, in his name, in the name of Jesus, whatever we ask the Father, we will receive. And so Acts chapter 10, verse 44, it says, while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who had the word. And you have heard in Acts chapter 8 and in Acts chapter 19, both Peter and Paul, they said, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? And they said, we don't even know what it is. And he prayed for them. Let us pray. Before we pray, I think I should read that scripture. Let's read, let's read Luke, Luke, because it's very important. This is the crux of the matter, because after now, oh, you're just bubbling the Holy Spirit. Luke chapter 11. Let's read from verse 11 to 13. From verse 11 to 13. If a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit for, to those who ask him? Lift your voice to heaven and say, Heavenly Father, I ask in the name of Jesus, give me the Holy Spirit, your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, in the name of Jesus, fill me now, Holy Spirit of God. I yield my heart to you, my body, my soul, my spirit. All that I am, I surrender to you, Holy Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus, fill me. Take over, take over, take over my entire being, body, soul, and spirit, spirit, soul, and body. Feel me now, Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, pour your spirit upon me in the name of Jesus. 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 Thank you, Almighty God. Thank you, Almighty King. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And now I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus, receive the power and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Let that gifts, let that power transform your life. Let the Spirit of God manifest in you with the signs of speaking in tongues, with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the power of God, with the fruit of the Spirit, the righteousness of God. Let all the blessing of God through the Holy Spirit manifesting you now in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. And so I want to go back to that Acts. Acts chapter 13 and look at that again because that's where we want to start. So Paul said to Elimas, he said, and now indeed the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you shall be blind, not seeing the sun for a time. And immediately a dark mist fell on him, and he went around seeking someone to lead him by the hand. Then the proconsul believed when he saw what had been done, being astonished at the teaching of the Lord. Raise your voice with me to heaven and say, in the name of Jesus, the hand of the Lord be upon anything that stands against the will of God in my life. The hand of the Lord be upon anything, whatever, whatever, whatever devil, whatever, whoever 
stands against the will of God. Those happenings in my life, in the day, in the night, those things that happen in your household, in my family, every activity of the devil, the hand of the Lord, the hand of the Lord, be upon it right now. Oh, because you're filled with the Holy Spirit, because I am filled with the Holy Spirit, because we are filled in the Holy Spirit. We have been given the power to cast out devil in the name of Jesus. We command right now every walk of the devil that stands against the will of God in our lives, in my life, in your life, in my family, in your family, in my children, in your children, amongst everyone that is connected upon this platform right now, the hand of the Lord be upon you and the works of the devil be destroyed now. In the name of Jesus, whatever stands against the will of God, whatever contends with the will of God in your life, in my life, with your family, with my family, right now, the hand of the Lord be manifested in your life and in your family against that thing, that power, that spirit, that man, that woman, whosoever it may be that contends against the will of God in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. You know, the Bible says the thief comes not but to steal, to kill, to destroy. Every contention is against, that is against the will of God is to bring you down, is to discourage you from doing the will of God. And the hand of the Lord must manifest right now against everything that contends, against the will of God in your life, in your family, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the glorious name of Jesus. Let's look at the book of Acts again for that illustration, and then you will ask whatever you will. Acts chapter 16. Oh, glory be to God. Acts chapter 16. Let's look at 16 to 18. You can also look at 6 to 8, please. Look at, um, look at 6 to 10. 6 to 10. You see how the Holy Spirit guides. So 16 to 18. Let's read it together. Now it happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us who brought her master's much profit by fortune telling. 17. This girl followed Paul and us, and cried out, saying, These men are the servants of the Lord, the servant of the Most High God, who proclaim to us the way of salvation. You would have been wondering what is wrong with what she was saying. The Bible says, do not be unequally yoked. Do not be unequally yoked. What agreement does the temple of God have with Belial? So don't listen to what they say, but what does the Holy Spirit speak to you? So this familiar spirit, this hypnotizing spirit, this invocation that this girl was doing, even though what she says will look ordinarily right, but she was invoking spirit to hinder the will of God. And so hear what Paul said from verse 18. And this she did for many days. But Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you. In the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that very hour. Today's demonstration. Turn around. Whatever, whoever, hypnotizing power, incantation, divination, whatever is around you, command it, command it to come out in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and command. In the name of Jesus, I command you, foul spirit. From my life, from my family, from anything that concerns me, from my brothers and sisters, from anyone that is connected here. Oh, that man that is afflicted with uh, infirmity by that devil, afflicted with uh, 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 insanity. I command you, come out of him. Come out of him. In the name of Jesus, you spirit of insanity. I command you, come out of him. They said it's mental health. Yes, there is mental health problem. But there is also affliction by demons causing insanity. So I command you, spirit of insanity, come out of that man, come out of that boy, cease to operate, cease to function, cease to walk in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' name, we have commanded. 
And so let it be. And so it must be in the name of Jesus. Finally, before I pause, in Acts chapter 3 and many others, but let's just use Acts chapter 3 because you're familiar with it. It is about the lame man because we want to pray for anyone who is sick. And then you will pray for whatsoever you desire. Acts chapter 3, verse 6. Acts chapter 3, verse 6. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have. But what I do have, I give, I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength, received power. So he, leaping up, stooped and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. Many examples. Many examples. You remember the other uh, man, uh, Enios, that we read Peter just said, Enios, Jesus Christ heals you. And he got up. Oh, glory be to God. Let's pray. Because this is what Jesus said we should do. Mark chapter 16, Mark chapter 16. Let's remind ourselves, verse 16 to 18. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned, 17. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Go ahead and agree with me. Say, in the name of Jesus, if you're sick in your body, agree with me right now by saying amen. In the name of Jesus, you sick, be healed. Infirmity, I order you. In the name of Jesus, leave that body. Get out of that body. And every devil, every demon that has afflicted that body, I cast you out. And I command you, body, be made whole, be healed in the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ, make you whole. For by the stripes of Jesus, you were healed. You are healed now. And I declare, you remain healed forever. I was healed. I am healed now. And I declare, I remain healed forever in the name of Jesus. Jesus, make you, make me, make us whole to the glory of God in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now, take two minutes and pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Those things that have been delayed in your life, hand them over to God and just ask, Father, Almighty God, let your hand be upon this thing and let the delay come to an end. The delay will come to an end. Oh, many demonstrations of God's power, God's acts in the book of Acts. Today, the acts of God takes over your life. The acts of God manifest in your life. Pray for yourself. Pray over your matter. When you need angels to appear, angels will minister to you in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, like the minister to Peter in Acts chapter 12, like the minister to Paul in Acts chapter 26. Oh, like the minister to Philip, the angels of God still minister to the people of God. Whatever you need, oh, you're soaked in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit of God fills you now. Fills me now. Fill us everywhere. Be filled, be filled, be full of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Let's bring our prayer to a close. By the power of the Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus, I counsel failure in your life and in your family. I counsel it, I counsel it, I counsel it in the name of Jesus. I counsel every enchantment, divination, incantation, sorcery, witchcraft of any form, whatever idol, idol is nothing, Paul said. Idol is nothing. Whatever has been offered to the devil against you, 
the blood of Jesus and knowledge. You are under the new covenant in the blood of Jesus. And I annul it in the name of Jesus. The everlasting covenant of God take over your life. And the power of the Holy Spirit drive your life, drive my life, drive our life, drive our family from now on. And we will fulfill the will of God. The glory of God will manifest in our lives. Thank you, our Father and our God. To you be all glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have agreed. And in Jesus' mighty name, I have decreed. And in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. So the key message, again to repeat, is that in the Synoptic Gospels, the disciples underwent training, faith, while in the Acts, they went through the practice and growing faith. And that growing faith continues throughout their life till they fulfill their ministry. And that has been passed on to us. And we continue throughout our lives till we fulfill our ministries. In the name of Jesus. The book of Acts is called the Acts of the Apostles. However, the real emphasis is the Acts of God and Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit in the lives of the apostles and early believers in Christ. And so the same Acts of God and Jesus Christ will manifest in your life and in my life, in your ministry and in my ministry, in the name of Jesus. Conclusions, therefore, the overall summary of the book of Acts is this, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. No Holy Spirit, no acts of God. All believers in Christ who have received the Holy Spirit can have all the acts as recorded in the book of Acts. And so I encourage you to take time and look at the um, the miracles, the signs and wonders, the acts of God, oh, that are recorded in the book of Acts, and tell yourself, this is mine. I had told us to do that last Sunday. I believe you have prayed, and they will happen in your life. And not just in your life, through you, God will minister the same to others. Through you, God will use his acts in you to bring many souls into the kingdom of God. Our heavenly father and our Lord Jesus Christ, therefore, expect all of us to do the acts in order for the will of God to grow on the earth. You see that in Acts chapter 12, 34, the Bible says, and the word of God grew. Oh, the word of God spread and grew when the acts of God manifested. Finally, eternal life is guaranteed to all who are in Jesus Christ and therefore have received the Holy Spirit of God and are carrying out the acts of God. The Almighty God make this a reality in your life and in my life continually in the name of Jesus. Assignment, brothers and sisters. You want to experience the act of God? Follow this assignment. Like I said, a brother was saying, how do I make this a reality in my life? How do I make this a reality in my life? By the way, realize what we have been teaching is what we covered in this book. Not in detail, we covered the headline in this book. If you go to uh, page 12 of it, this is the book the Holy Spirit helped me to put together, which we have been teaching. Who is a Christian? Who is a Christian? You probably didn't realize. So I encourage you to read this book again now that you understand. Page 12, the last paragraph says this. I encourage you to study the Bible daily, particularly Acts of the Apostles to learn more. God bless you. Before that, the whole paragraph says, with the above, as you continue to live by faith and love, you will definitely experience the transforming power of the Spirit of God. 
I encourage you to study the Bible daily, particularly Acts of the Apostles, to learn more. So now you see why we came to study Acts of the Apostles. We'll follow this up with the name of Jesus, and by God's grace, we'll come to faith. So assignment, carry out weekly witnessing of Jesus Christ to your family, that is your Jerusalem, your neighborhood, that is your Judea, your associates, that is your Samaria, and to all you can reach, that is your outermost part of the earth. According to Jesus' instruction to the disciples that were with him in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it is the same instruction that is to you and I who have come into the way, who have become Christians. Number two, pray for the sick and deliver the oppressed by casting out the demons. Don't shy away from practicing what Jesus has instructed in Acts chapter 16. So brother, you're talking about how do I make this a reality in my life? Carry out these assignments and you will see the manifestation in your life. Number three, review and prepare your daily personal fellowship and life ministry plan. What is your daily personal fellowship and life ministry? That is service ministry plan. Set prayer time, Bible study time, evangelism time. At least a day in a week, set time to seek the Holy Spirit. You must cover, uh, uh, court, you must court the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit must become your friend and you must be the friend of the Holy Spirit. He must not be somebody that once in a while you come to. He must be your friend at all times. Then finally, walk in this reality. Fear nothing, doubt nothing, but walk by faith and love, doing the will of God continually. The Almighty God bless you and transform your life. And may the power of the Holy Spirit manifest in you mightily and bring many souls into the kingdom of God, that the will of God may be done in your life, in your family, in your neighborhood, and in all the earth. In the name of Jesus, to the glory of God. This is where we'll stop. And maybe you have one or two questions to ask. I will take it before we share the grace. God bless you. One or two questions or clarification. Yes, please go ahead. Should I say good afternoon, uh, God's people? And really, I don't want to, I have no question, but to say every day we are hearing this word, they are. They look new, they look new, but the same message. So I just to say thank you so much. May God use what we have heard today and walk those powerful work in us in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much. That's powerful and encouraging. Okay, brother, Dara, you are on. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, I took the challenge. I just want to share it's like a testimony. I took the challenge that Pastor, the assignment he gave last time for us to share the gospel. Yes. Actually, it's something I used to do very regularly um, a long time ago. So I really was thinking, how do I do this again? You know, and by the Holy Spirit just put some words, uh, pointed me to some scriptures. I took the time to study them. And then I got on a bus and I shared the word. Somebody gave his life to Christ, you know, and from then on, there's just been that hunger that has, even though the week, these past two weeks have been really, really choky, that there's been that hunger to try to see how to um, do this a bit more often. Uh, I'm excited that Pastor mentioned it. I, I was just thinking of the possibility of taking it into uh, something I do, if not once a week, but a few times in a month, dedicated specifically to that, getting to a boss, 
preach to people, share the word, go out and just see how to, you know, put myself in a position where I can allow God to manifest. And uh, these things that have been thought about become real in my own personal life and, and my personal experience. So I'm grateful for that. Thank you. Oh, praise and glory be to God. This is what it is, brothers and sisters. And when you go like that, heal the sick, cast out the devil, whatever is the challenge, God is with you. This, this is an encouraging testimony. Brother Sonny, yes, go ahead. Uh, thank you very much, Pastor. I don't really have a question to, uh, to ask, but I want to just um, say my understanding uh, of this teaching that we just uh, bring to conclusion today. Yes, I want to start by saying that uh, the teaching has actually opened my eyes as a person, the ministry of the Holy Spirit, because uh, through this teaching, I've come to realize that uh, as a Christian, I need the Holy Spirit. I don't have to go for a long time training. There are simple things to be done, and that has to do with repentance, staying away from sin, and believing in Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. From there, the Holy Spirit will come because it's only when I have the Holy Spirit that I can actually manifest the, the work of God in my life. And I don't think that um, there is any way anybody can actually claim to be a child of God because being a child of God comes with challenges. And in order for you to overcome those challenges, you need the help of the Holy Spirit. So it's a, it's a very nice one. And uh, I have to come to realize that uh, in order to keep the Holy Spirit, one has to be sanctified because the Holy Spirit would not, uh, being the Spirit of God, would not like to dwell in a polluted body or a sinning body. So those are very keys. So I uh, really have to thank you. Thank God for the teaching today. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Just to um, uh, complete your statement that you made, so somebody else doesn't hear and uh, missed it. You are saying, I don't think anyone can claim to be a child of God uh, without the Holy Spirit. That's what you, the complete sentence, it seems you um, didn't complete it, even though the analogy you gave made clear that that's what you meant to say. Thank you very much, uh, Brassoni, and thank you everyone uh, for the contribution and what you have shared. This is where we will uh, leave it, you are empowered by the Spirit of God. Go and live the life that Jesus Christ has called us to live, that God has given to us to live through Jesus Christ, his Son, by the power of the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. The Almighty God bless you. The Almighty God enable you, quicken you by his spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you and the acts of God overtake you, overtake me, overtake us in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye-bye.